Hi, I'm Guy, and I want to show you some of the stuff we've been building at Augment and how we use it to, to develop uh, Augment. Uh, so I'm going to play the role of a new developer who just joined Augment. And typically, one of the first things I do when, I, um, I'm, when I'm looking at a new repository I'm not familiar with is I ask, I ask our system uh, to describe it for me. I find that this is a great way to kind of get oriented and, and see at a high level what's going on in the repository. And so we can see that, um, yes, we have a large monorepo of a company or project called Augment. That's correct. We have a lot of stuff related to AI, code generation, and so on and so forth. And we have these different components around research, services, tools, infrastructure. Um, we use Kubernetes. We use Docker configurations. These are all correct things. This is all correct. And then I can go in ahead and uh, ask it to tell me more about services, for example. So services is where we store all of our uh, production code. And so in services, we can see, OK, what are the high level components? Uh, we have an API proxy. We have authentication. We have a content manager. These are all real components in our system. Um, and so what I found is that in this way, within 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, I get a pretty good sense of what the repository is about, what are the high level components. I don't have to go read any readmes or rely on any documentation. I just ask the model, and it, and it helps me out. All right. So now let's say that I've uh, received my first ticket to solve, and the, the, the ticket has to do with a feature we call uh, code edits. So at first I want to show you what code edits are. Uh, code edits are where I have, let's say, a piece of code. I can select it, and then I can uh, give the model an instruction. Let's say rename food to bar. And so the model shows me a diff view of the uh, code before, the code after, I can choose to accept it or reject it. And that's our code edit feature. And let's say that now I'm working on uh, the Augment repository. I was asked to take these samples, which we collect and then export out of a database, and we want to add session ID to all these samples. Session ID is how we track user sessions. And so I'm going to start by asking, um, if I want to add a session ID, I'm going to start by asking what data structure holds exported code edits, because I want to go find that and get, add the session ID field to it. And as you can see, because this is a real large, complicated repository, it's not just one data structure that holds them. There are actually several candidates at several different stages of the pipeline that hold them. But in this case, the model was able to figure out that edit datum uh, is the first choice. This is actually where we store these uh, code edits. And so I'm going to go into edit datum, and I'm going to start typing. And here the completion model kick, kicks in. Our completion model has context awareness, just like the chat model. It knows that session ID is something that we commonly use across the system. And so it easily completes the field for me. So, so far, so good. I've been able to locate the place where the change, the first change needs to happen and make the change. But now the other part of the work begins, which is to go and propagate this field throughout the whole system. Now, since I made a change to a data class, um, maybe I can rely on the type checker to go and tell me where all the other places I need to uh, propagate this change are. So I can pull up the problems pane in VS Code. And looking at this list, it doesn't look too promising because most of these play, most of these uh, uh, errors that are being reported have nothing to do with the change that I made. And um, at least in my setup, uh, the problems pane for Python is typically very noisy and not something I can rely on to complete my tasks. So instead, I'm going to pull up our suggested edits pane uh, and. This, this feature looks at the changes that I've made so far and then tries to predict across the whole code base what other changes do I need to make in order to complete my task. So it kind of tries to infer uh, what next edits do I need to make. And so we can see how I currently I'm in this edit.py file. The first change is in this export edit to JSONL file, which is where uh, the uh, uh, the samples get exported. And so here there is a function that accepts edit data and returns the dictionary. And so I need to add this uh, entry. All right, so that's good. The second place uh, is an interesting one. So as you can see, this is a SQL query that's inside a string inside a Python file. 
This is the SQL query that pulls these exported uh, code edit samples from the database. And so the model is saying, ah, oh, if you added session ID to the data class, probably you also want to add, um, you also want to uh, query it from the database. And so you need to get this JSON value and then select on it. So I'm going to accept that. Um, once I change the, the query from the database, there's a change to related data structure. This is actually the raw data structure that represents a row in the database. It needs to have session ID as well. So these are all real changes. Once I did that, I can see that there is this uh, constructor here. Once I go to it, I can see that the type checker is complaining that I don't have session ID. The model already knows that we need session ID populated with the row. Uh, field and so on and so forth. This is a, a unit test code where the model populates the session ID constructor uh, entry with a test session. And uh, here we can go on and on. So at this point, uh, we're finding that uh, suggested edits uh, is actually helping us write some of the PRs as we develop suggested edits and, and other features. Um, so suggested edits chat with context awareness, completions with context awareness. These are things we use every day at Augment and finding them uh, extremely useful and hoping you will as well.